YouTube and MAPC and today I'm making another tutorial for you guys. In today's tutorial we're going to talk about working with multiple classes. Now so far um, in our tutorials we've been treating the class and the, um, the program as interchangeable things. Well today we're going to learn how that they're not interchangeable and we're going to make multiple classes and we're going to have them interact with each other. So one of the basic things you can do with multiple classes is you can import methods from other classes. Now Java has tons and tons of default classes that you can uh, they have a lot of useful stuff in there, and then you can take methods and variables from those classes by importing them. So there's some really cool stuff in um, in, in a lot of them. Probably my favorite one, uh, I find transform is pretty cool too, but one of my favorites is, ma is the math class. So in the math class they have variables like pi and e that are doubles with ex extremely accurate va values, and they also have all, the, all those math functions like log and sine and tangent that kind of stuff. But the one we're going to talk about today is the random. And that's and that's the one we're going to be using in our class. Um, random is very useful when, whenever you want something to occur in unpredictable fashion. Like I was programming Snake Game in Java, well, I guess it's a month or two ago now. Um, and you, in that program you use the random method in order to make sure that the food appears at a random spot in the game each time. So we're going to be learning how to use that method today. And we're also going to be making multiple classes ourselves and interact with each other. So the thing I know about when you're making other classes is that they have a thing called a constructor method. Now a constructor method is sort of a unique method. It doesn't require a return type. In fact, in fact you can't have a return type with a constructor method, which is, makes it an, a non, an anomaly among methods. And the constructor method, what it does is you use it in the creation of, of the, the class or the object of the class. And we're going to be in our main class and we're going to make the other class or the animal class from from in the main class and the constructor we're, we're going to take the constructor method from the animal class and we're going to use that to, to set some preliminary settings for the animal class and in using the constructor method we can make each one a little different like for instance there's there's a time when we're making a shooter game maybe when you we have a bullet class and you, you shoot bullets and maybe you want to have each bullet go in a little bit slightly random direction to make it spray a little bit so you can input a different direction in, in a constructor method in order to make them each a little different. And so we're going to talk about how to do that today in this tutorial. So we'll see you guys there. Now for the tutorial. Um, I've already created the class, and the first thing we're going to do is create another class. Fun. So now um, the name of this class can be cat. So I'm just going to name public cat. Or I'm sorry, public class cat. There we go. And here is going to be our coding, and I've got to save it first though. So I'll just call it cat.java. Save. Wonderful. Now, something I tell you. Normally, like pretty much what you memorize is after you create the class, you put in the, a main method, but that's not the case in this situation. Um, a main method is only supposed to use once in a program, because whenever you start a program, it'll look through the entire program, th through all the class you have, and search for the main method. Or at least that's how it works when you have jar files, and when you get higher up in in Java, that's what you'll be doing all the time. It's important they have one main method in your entire program out of all your classes. So that way there's one clearly defined starting point for your program. And we already have that main method in our multiple classes class. So no main method for the cat class. But there is something else that um, is used in a lot of classes that's called a constructor method. A constructor method is basically the place where you put the code for the creation of the class. So when this class is created or when an instance of the class is created, because we can create multiple classes, multiple of the same class, when that happens we want to go through this constructor method. So I'm going to type out the constructor method, public cat parentheses and uh, that's it. So there's a couple things different for methods. Things are the same are, you know, it has parentheses and the name and the and, uh, method body right here. You should understand that, but there's a couple things that are particular for the constructor method. Number one, I called it cat. It has to be named the exact same thing as the name of the program, so that way it knows that this is the constructor method because it matches the name of the of their, their class. Sorry, I said program. I meant class. And another thing that's unique to it is that my methods tutorial I say Every single class has an access modifier, a return type, and you have to put down whether it's static or not. The constructor method is an exception to that rule. It's, I believe it's the only exception. It does not have a return type. Its purpose is to create the class or to be part of the initializing process of the class. So there's really nothing that needs a return. It's not meant to serve any purpose other than being the jump start for the class, so no return type. You can't put down void either, because Java knows that's not supposed to have a return type, so if, if you put down void, you'd be confusing it 
saying, yeah, I know, or it's just particular like that, so no return type. And then, if you, it's impossible to have for it to be static. If you, if you think it through, it's not possible for the constructor to be static. So, for that reason, you don't put down static either. And so, that at least the only thing is the ASIC access modifier. So, we put down public as I, as I usually do, but if you took it out, you could potentially just have it look like this. And it'll just be a default axe modifier, nothing in front of it. So, in many ways, it's a lot simpler to work with than other, other methods. So, public cat, there we go. And now I'm going to input two arguments, string name and string. Alright, so what we're going to do in our other class, we're going to be creating several cats, and our arguments for the cat is, number one, what would, what would we want the cat to be named, what would we want the name of the cat to be, so fluffy or something like that, and next one, what color cat is it, so is it a black cat, is it a yellow cat, is that how you would say that, or a blonde cat, I don't know, yeah, that's what we've got so far, now, another thing we want, another attribute we want to add to the cat is how many lives does it have, because, you know, cats have nine lives, and as they go through, they they work through all those lives, and we're going to assign it a random amount of lives, which is less than nine. So we're going to create the variable called byte lives. And now we want to create a random number from zero to nine. The problem is that we don't have anything that can make it create a random number. In order to create a random number, we, need, we probably need to create another class or, or method that contains an array that has a big long list of numbers that are in a random fashion, and then it'll be called a number table. And it's a big long process that we don't want to go through. Luckily, when we installed Java, it, in it installed a bunch of other classes that would be at our disposal. So we need to import one of those classes so we can use it in our class. So in order to import a class, type down import, and uh, okay, import, and I'm just going to type down my import, so java.lang.math, make sure it's capital M. So this is um, working in the file system of Java, so it says grab the Java package, think of a package as a file directory, or a group of classes. We'll learn more of packages later, but that, if you think about them as a, as a folder, or just a, just a generally as a group of classes, that's basically what it is. So we take the package Java, and inside the package Java is another package called Lang. So then we go into Lang, because that's what the dot means. We go from Java down to Lang, and then we got another dot, and then we go down to math class. And inside the math class, there are a lot of different math at our disposal, like sine or tangent. And there's also some cool variables, or there's only two variables, really, e and pi. You're going to be using pi in the challenge today. But for our disposal right now, or for our use right now, we're going to be using a method called random. So, we're going to set lives equal to math.random. We have to put the math dot in front of the method random because random is defined in the math class. We, if we put down just random, it would assume that's defined in our cat class and it would search for it and it wouldn't find it, so you get an error. But since we put math dot in front of it, it knows to search in the math class for this random method. So what the random method does is it returns uh, a decimal between 0 and 1. And we want it to be between 0 and 9, so if we multiply that random number put it by 9, it'll come out at a number between 0 and 9. And another thing is, this will be a decimal, and we need to be a byte, so we'll round down to a normal number, so we're going to convert it over to byte. This is called variable casting, I think I talked about it earlier. Anyway, this will take whatever this number ends up being and convert it down to a byte. So now we've got all the information for the cat, the name, the color, and the number of lives it has left. So we'll just print out all that information, so system out print print ln. System dot out. Okay, so we're going to say first name of the cat. So we have the name George is say the color. If we put down orange for the color, it would say George is orange. And then we add on and it has space plus just going down next slide for space. And it has this many lives left. There we go. So if I were to if if um the fly is equal to eight, the name is George and the color is orange, it would say George is orange and it has eight lives left. So there we go, we created the cat, and this will work for a lot of different cats. And that's all that all there is to this class. And now we're going to create objects of this class in our multiple classes class. And in order to do that, the thing you, the thing you need to understand is that a class, even though it's even though it's complex, it's still considered a variable, just a more complex variable. So we'll be creating it just like we would create any other variable. So if we had byte i equals 9, we, it starts the type, the name, and then what you want it to be equal to. So same thing here. What type of object is it? It's a cat, because that's the name of the, the object or class. And we're going to call this first cat c1. And set equal to new cat. So remember we use a new operator back when we learned arrays? It's saying set it equal to a new object of the cat. And what this is doing is it's calling the constructor from the cat from the cat class. 
So if we look here, the constructor contains two arguments, name and color. So within here, we're going to put down what we want name to be, Fluffy. That's the name of one of my cats. She had three kids. She's a, she's a cool mom. And then the other one, we're going to put down the color, and she is gray. She has a gray color. Okay, so now we've created one cat. One cat. Now we're going to create another cat, so it's a, it's a cat. We'll call this cat C2. And it's going to be a new instance of cat. And first argument is name. And this cat is Onyx. It's my other cat. She's only a few years old. She's still in that kitten stage, so she's, she's pretty cool as well. And she is a slightly darker gray than Fluffy, so we're going to type on dark gray. And then for the third one, I'm just going to make up a cat. So you call it C3 to equal to a new cat. And the name of this cat is Tabby Cat. Tabby cat, and it is. And there we go. We've created three instances of the cat class, and for each of these, going to run through this stuff over here. Now it's all set, and I'm going to compile the for the class the name method. Multiple classes. Okay. Now notice here, if I have a dire, it'll show everything in directory, and it is created a class for multiple classes, you can see it right here, and it has also created a class for the cat, which you can see up here. This is because it'll, it'll um, go through multiple classes, and it'll see that you're creating instances of the cat class, and then it'll check whether that class exists. If it exists, it'll compile it for you into a dot .class. So, that's sort of a neat thing about Java, because it'll compile everything for you that you need. So now, we're going to run multiple classes, and it's done everything that we want to. It said Fluffy is gray, and it has seven lives left. Onyx is dark gray, and it has one lives left. Apologize for the grammatical error there. It is orange, and it has four lives left. And you, if, if you run the class over again, it'll generate new numbers for the lives each time, because we use a random class from the, from the math, or no, so, sorry, because we use the random method from the math class. So that's how this works. You have successfully created several classes. And to see if you really understand this, let's try out the challenge. OK, so for today's challenge, um, this is what we're going to create. Java multiple class C. This is what we're going to create. You're going to create multiple classes. And the class is going to be circle rather than cat. And what the circle class is going to do is it's going to print out the two attributes that you input for, for it. So the constructor method will have an argument for what name and also the radius value. So you, you have to create four of them with, with whatever name and with whatever radius. And within the class, it's got, it needs to calculate the circumference of the circle using the radius. So right here I put down, has if it has a radius of one, that would mean that circumference is 6.2831. And as you can see, it's a long decimal because it's really accurate. And the reason it's so accurate is because for pi, I used the variable from the math class. So a little bit of background knowledge, the equation for circumference is 2 pi r. Most of you probably know this, but if you don't, look it up on Wikipedia or something. It's, it's not too hard of an equation to no, re memorize, and it'll be useful to you. And uh, you use a pi, which is a constant. It equals 3.141 something something something. Now, I've only memorized the first three, and I'm assuming you guys haven't memorized much more than that. But if you use the variable from the math class, you can automatically have the first, I don't know, probably like a thousand decimals, so it'll be very, very accurate. It's probably not a thousand, never mind. It has more than we know. So the challenge is to calculate the circumference within the class using the variable from the math class. And then you can make multiple classes of the circle and make it come out like this. And that that's it. Just, if you can do that, you I think you understand this stuff. All right, so you've just watched this Inforge tutorial. If you found it helpful, Please like the video and leave a comment. This helps out my channel. If you found the challenge helpful, you can find more of them at my website, www.sinforge.co. You can also find my games and my other tutorials there. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.